talk. This is Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center, and we're very pleased this morning to be able to present a webinar on the Township Sign Grant program that we have here in Ohio. We're fortunate to have this program available. Um, I'm going to give you just a couple of quick housekeeping items so you're aware of that, and then we'll move into the actual presentation, which is a, an abbreviated version of the presentation that's used at the pre-grant meetings for the townships. Um, our housekeeping items is that on your screen when you logged in on your computer, hopefully you have a conversation panel that showed up on the left-hand side towards the bottom, and if you did not, there should be a circle there with a thought bubble in it. Go ahead and click on that circle with the thought bubble, and it should then display that conversation panel for you on the left-hand side. Um, also, I wanted to let you know that we are attempting to record this webinar. Um, if we're successful, we will post a link to the recording, and we'll send that link out to everyone. Um, but please don't let that dampen your enthusiasm for asking questions, because if, if you have a question, more than likely more than one other person will have that same question. And I want to make certain that we do get questions answered. Um, along that um, topic, for questions while I'm presenting, I would ask that you please put them into that conversation panel that I mentioned just a few seconds ago that's on the left-hand side on the bottom. Um, you can just type your questions in. I will do my best to respond to them as quickly as I can because I'm doing double duty today. I'm not only hosting, but I'll be your presenter as well. Um, and then at the end of the webinar, I will open the phone lines up, um, hopefully if we have time, so we can do audio questions. I'll also give you my email address that if you want to ask questions offline, um, you can send them to me as well. But please, I encourage you to go ahead and post your questions in the um, conversation panel because you know, we want to make sure that we have everybody, um, everybody's questions answered and we're able to share that information with everybody else. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and start moving through our presentation because we do have quite a bit of information to cover. And as I had mentioned before, that what I'm going to be sharing with you is the um, an abbreviated version of the presentation that we'll actually be giving on March 22nd, 29th, and April 4th to the townships that have been invited to apply for the grant. Um, how this works with the township sign grant in Ohio is that we look at crash data on an annual basis. And here in Ohio, we're very fortunate to have good crash data for all of our roads, not just the interstate system. Um, and I'll explain a little bit later in the presentation how it is that we have that data available but with the data that we have available we're able to see which townships have above average crash numbers and what we've been fortunate to do is to have what they call highway safety improvement program funds HSIP funds that have been dedicated to um, improving the safety of township roads through upgrading or replacing existing signage in the areas where those higher than average um, crashes are occurring. So what um, they have committed originally was that they were giving us a million dollars a year and we could invite the top 100 townships who were on that list. Um, the program has been so successful that they have actually um, now doubled the amount that we are given each year to 200, or excuse me, 2 million, and the top 200 townships are being invited to apply. Now, one of the things about the townships who are invited to apply that you need to know is that once you've been invited to apply, you actually send an application in and we fund you, then you're not invited to apply again. Um, what we do is we, we move you off the list, and then we move other townships up the list. So we've done this program now for about five or six years. So we're not really truly working with the top 100 townships any longer. Um, we're able to continue to work down the list. Um, and theoretically, we should get to all 1,308 townships. But um, you know, it'll take a number of years to be able to move through everybody on the list. So the reason why townships are so interested in this program is that 
when they're invited to apply, it's up to $50,000 that they can receive in signs, posts, and hardware to put those signs up with. Um, it's not actually a monetary grant in the sense of us. Um, oh, there's a good question on the screen. You know, we will double check that date for you, Doug, um, and I'll get back with you on that. So let me... Um, you know, double check that and I'll reconfirm that um, that it is which date it is the fourth or the eighth. Thank you. Um, so on the township sign grant, they can receive materials in the value of up to $50,000. And it's a good thing that it's materials because it actually streamlines the process for the townships. They end up not having any out of pocket to get those materials. Um, you know, we tell them why they're there, that they've made the list, and I explain to them why it is um, that they're having a crash problem and that we're hoping to reduce or eliminate the crashes that are occurring in their township. So we want to help them reduce that crash problem. And one thing that we found with the um, township sign grant program the first couple of years is that we did it without a mandatory meeting before people applied and we had a lot of issues um, and in order for us to know for certain that you know we had properly hopefully communicated this information about the grant to them um, we felt it was important to have a mandatory meeting where we all sat down face to face and we went over the information and folks were able to ask the questions um, before they actually applied for the funding for the grant um, so we found in the years since we've done that um, started that mandatory meeting that we've cut down tremendously on the number of issues the townships have encountered with administering the grant. So essentially the, the township sign grant pre-meeting is so they can learn about the program, um, how they can apply and reduce the number of crashes on their roads. So what do we mean by um, signage upgrades? That's a big question that we get on the grant. Um, process and you know one of the things I wanted just to briefly talk about this morning is you know when we're talking about upgrading signs you know we have an examples of before and after on some roadways that we had worked on actually down in Warren County and you know on the left side is the before picture and on the right side is the after picture and you see on the left side the Chevron signs they are much smaller the ones on the right side are much larger um, that's an upgrade you know the chevrons on the right hand side have the post reflectors running down them um, whereas on the left side they didn't that's a, an upgrade that we're talking about that could be made during the you know process of receiving this grant you can get bigger signs you know we definitely encourage the reflectors on the signs because it makes it so they can um, be more visible and be seen on the roadways um, on the left hand side on this example that you're seeing on your screen um, there were no signs there on the right hand side you'll see that not only were chevrons added um, and a fixed object marker for the end of that guardrail but there was a, an advance warning curve sign that was added you know if you were on the left hand side with no advance warning curve sign you never would know that there was an intersecting road coming in as you were going around that curve until you were right up on it and this was actually one of the top crash locations um, that we were having issues issues with and with that advance warning curve sign we were able to get those crashes greatly reduced. Here's another example of you know signage upgrades. On this road you'll see on the left that there's really just a couple of signs on the right hand side um, and then on the right hand photo you'll see that the signs were actually doubled up to show that you had the, the turns coming up. Um, there was ball banking done, which is a, a term that I'll discuss with you a little bit more um, in this presentation. But with the ball banking, it's where you go through using a device that sits on your dashboard and you measure the advisory speed that should go on those small plaques below the advance warning curve signs. It's not a difficult process. Um, I'll show you where we've got a toolbox that explains how to do that with a video, a self-help video that takes you through the process. And we even have the equipment available that you can borrow in order to get ball banking done. Um, you'll see as well that farther down the road, on the left side, there were no large signs um, down there letting them know right in the turn where that was at. But on the right-hand side, the doubled up 
large arrows were added along with chevrons. Another upgrade that you can look at doing, um, you know, on the left side, you see that they just had one large arrow in the curve, but on the right hand side, you'll notice that it, it wasn't necessarily a curve so much as it was a turn because of the speed that was put on there. Um, if it's 30 miles per hour or lower, it's really a turn. It's not a curve. And you know, they doubled up the signs to show that the advisory speed was 15 miles an hour um, and that you were dealing with two different turns. And then they doubled up the large arrow and they added chevrons through the, the turn. So these are all things that you can do with your roadways. Um, and we definitely encourage you to use the funding in this grant in order to do that. Um, you can, again, double up, you know, advanced warning signs, you can add chevrons. On the left side, you can barely see that one little arrow way down there. It looks like, almost like it's floating up against the tree. But on the right hand side, it's real clear that there's an arrow there and they even have post delineators on that arrow in addition to, you know, post delineators on the rest of the signs. So another upgrade example is, you know, the addition of chevrons throughout a curve. Chevrons really help to give the driver guidance as they're driving, especially at nighttime. You know, if you're on a roadway that's unfamiliar, it helps the, the driver to navigate the road better. Another upgrade, and I like this example because we've actually got a couple of photos here. It's a series of photos. Um, on this first one, you'll see on the left side, there was just one sign warning them about the bike trail coming up. Um, and you couldn't you really see that other sign farther down the road. But on the right hand side, you definitely see where the bike trail's at. There's it's doubled up on both sides. There's arrows pointing down to where it's at. And then as we move farther down the road, and get up on that bike trail, there's actually an advance warning sign for turns just after that. Now, on the left-hand side, you'll see that advance warning turn sign just shows the turns, but the one on the right-hand side shows that there's a road running through it. So you're letting the driver know before they get to those turns that there's actually a road crossing right through that area. One of the things that we can do with the grant is that we can, with those advance warning signs, show roads intersecting and we can, you know, even if you don't see it on the application, the exact configuration of how your road comes in and intersects through the curve or turn, you can just hand draw it for us and we'll give it to the sign company and we'll get that made for you to show the proper representation representation of how that road is intersecting. Another one good example of putting in the um, chevrons throughout a curve. And we have another example here. I've had some folks refer to this as the best signed curve uh, on you know, one of the, within one of these counties. Um, but you'll see on the left, you know, there was one advance warning sign that showed curve. And on the right hand side, you'll see that it's a better representation because it lets them know that it's not just one curve. It's going to be a series of curves and um, that what the advisory speed is. And then there's chevrons and large arrows down in the, the actual curve. So hopefully that gives you a better feel. Um, with the examples of what you can do on your roadways. And I'm going to move in now to explaining more about the grant itself now that you know what you can do with what you can get through the grant. I'm going to give you an overview. I'm going to um, talk about determining your sign orders. Um, and that part isn't as extensive as what it would be in person because that part's normally delivered by our head sign engineer. Um, and he is there to answer any questions you have um, concerning signs on the grant or signs you'd like to see added as a part of the grant package. And then I'll talk to you about what normally townships can expect during the grant process and do's and don'ts. And then, of course, your questions. So with the, the grant program, as we talked about, it provides up to $50,000 in materials, meaning signs, posts, and hardware for the eligible townships. And for what's called fiscal year 2020, which this grant is funded at the beginning of July each year, which is the beginning of our state fiscal year, um, we are inviting 200 townships to apply, you know, by the date. Um, 
for funding that would begin the beginning of July, and it's based upon their crashes that occurred in the townships from 2013 to 2017. So with the grant, um, the townships who are eligible to apply are being contacted by our center and invited to apply. Packets are going out in the mail daily right now until we get them all out. And we also sent out an email notification last week about who was eligible and we're contacting all the county engineers to make sure they know which ones of their townships are eligible. Um, the Township Association has been a fabulous partner in this process and we're providing all that same information to Heidi Fout, um, who I do believe is planning to put it into the March edition of their um, newsletter communication as well. So materials under the grant are covered at 100%. This means there's no match required from the township. Um, now the township does have to commit to install the signs with their own labor. There is no funding available for installation, so please don't get your signs all there in the township garage and then call me up and try to beg for some money for labor to install because we can't do that the way that this grant's set up. You know, it flows so easily because we don't deal with paying for labor and we don't buy any right away with the grant. Um, and you'll see that in the upcoming slides. Um, there is no money out of pocket for the townships. What we do is once you as a township, you know, send in your application, which is essentially your order, because we already know why you need the grant. We've taken all the need to justify giving you the grant um, out of this process. We've already justified it that you need it. It's just up to you to figure out what your sign order is and send it to us, and that's your application. Um, what we do then is we go ahead and work through the process of getting everything federally authorized and then once that happens we actually will issue purchase orders um, to the vendor or vendors with instructions to deliver the signs posts and hardware to your township um, your township certifies the order the orders as they're received um, back to ODOT meaning our office here at LTAP and uh, to let us know it's okay to pay the invoices and then ODOT will actually make what's called an on behalf of payment to the vendors for your townships so there is no need for your township to go get a loan and pay the vendors and then wait for ODOT to reimburse that is not you know part of this process we're doing on behalf of payments for you so we pay it 100% and there's no money out of pocket for the townships. We do ask with the signs that they be installed within one year of what's called the federal authorization date. Now this is not the date of your application. This happens usually about two to three months after your application is approved and we'll actually provide you this date because we do all the paperwork in the background to get your project federally authorized. Um, now if your township has an issue, you can apply for a one-year extension to install signs. Um, and what we mean issue, you know, we've had townships that unfortunately have suffered um, through losing staff members due to death or, or something like that. And I know township staffs are very small you know, to start with. And sometimes it really is just the, the three township trustees and the fiscal officer. They don't even have a road person. Um, they're doing it all themselves. So if something happens and you need an extension, we can get you an extension, but you do have to ask for it. And then what we've done as well with this app application is, um, you know, a lot of the villages that are either up against a township or maybe completely um, surrounded by a township have asked, hey, can, can we have a similar grant program? Um, villages are, are very small in their sign needs most times. So what they've asked us here is to just have your township, if you're eligible to apply, work with the villages that are right there next to you um, and include their sign needs in your grant application. And then it's up to you as the township to work it out with the village to get everything installed. Um, if I was a township trustee and, and my village came and the village came to me and said, hey, you know, we want to be part of your sign grant, I, I would say that's fine, but you guys have to install the signs. The township's not going to do it for you. So, I mean, it's really up to you how to do it, however you want to work it out, um, you know, but 
you know, there's definitely the opportunity there to help out your, your villages that are, you know, right there working with you. So with that, I'm going to talk some about determining your sign order, because this, other than installing the signs, this is where you're really going to put some work into the process. Um, how you determine your sign order is um, a process that starts with the crash maps. And these come to you in the packet that you receive in the mail inviting you to apply for the grant. We will also provide them to you again at the um, meeting if you need them, um, the pre-grant meeting that you come to. But the crash maps, and there's a representation of one here on the right-hand side of your screen, um, actually physically demonstrate where crashes are happening in your township. And the map is developed directly from the what's called the OH1, and that's the traffic report, crash report that's filled out by officers across Ohio. It doesn't matter if they're State Highway Patrol, you know, or a village um, police law enforcement um, agency, you know, a township law enforcement agency. Everybody fills out the same report. And what happens is all these reports are put into the computer system and, you know, through work that ODOT does with the Department of Public Safety, we're able to pull all that information over and turn it into maps to show where crashes are happening. And what we want you to do is to take your map and start with the areas where you're having the biggest problems. You know, your fatal crashes, your serious injury crashes, your visible injury, you know, all the way down to the, the property damage only. And this is what's called the hot spot approach. You want to start with your hot spots and, you know, work your way through those to figure out, okay, we know these are problem areas. What can we do to improve the signage at that area? Is the signage faded? Do we need to add more signs like you saw in the pictures earlier in the presentation? Um, just work through that whole process of figuring out what your signs need to be in those areas um, to improve the you know visibility of the signs you know a lot of times it might just be going to larger signs as well maybe you've got the right signs there um, or enough signs but you need to make them more visible so work through the hot spots first and then once you work through the hot spots you know a lot of times we hear I've got this curve over here and it looks just like the one where we're having crashes at, but because I don't have any crashes at this curve, I haven't been able to, you know, take care of it, but I'm afraid it's just a matter of time till this curve has crashes just like the other one does. Well, once you've dealt with your hot spots, you can deal with those same or similar similar areas. So, you know, that's what's called systemic. And you don't necessarily have to worry about the, those terms. You just have to know, deal with the dots first, and then deal with areas that could have dots that you know are a possibility and it just hasn't happened yet. And then if you've got funding left in that $50,000 limit, you can look across the rest of your township system to see what other stop signs need to be updated that maybe aren't meeting the retroreflectivity guidelines. Um, you know, what other signs, you know, should or could you possibly change out under the grant in order to take care of your whole system? So most townships are able to go through this stepped process, looking at the hot spots, looking at the the same or similar and then go on the rest of their township system um, and on average they don't even max out the fifty thousand dollars so don't feel that you know I have some townships who will call up and say hey is there like a, a sweet spot a number I shouldn't ask for over a certain amount and, and that's not the case we just want you to order what you need for your township um, most of the townships average out about $21,000 in the grant that they receive. And that's, you know, with counting townships that don't have that many road miles with, you know, very, very large townships that use every bit of the 50000 But there's no real sweet spot that people get approved or not approved at. I can tell you up to now, anyone who's applied has been funded. We have not run out of funds. The only way we would look at, um, you know, not funding someone who had applied and possibly bumping them out into a future year would be if we you know, hit up against that $2 million limit, but we haven't hit up against it yet. So just ask what 
for what you need, though. Um, if you just replaced a sign last year, don't ask for a new one this year because that really is a waste of resources that could go to another township. Um, but if it's been a long time and you know you have dealt with your hot spots, you've dealt with areas that are similar to your hot spots, and you need to replace signs um, that haven't been replaced in an awful long time and definitely need to be upgraded so they have their proper retroflectivity, um, then go ahead and you know put that um, those signs on the application. I had a message that the slides weren't moving forward, so I hadn't um, advanced the sign. The it says I'm not getting anything either. Okay. Um, hopefully, you guys are seeing step two up on your screen right now. Can you let me know if you're seeing that or not? I was talking for quite a bit on that one slide, and I apologize about that. Nope, Marty's not seeing that either. Okay, someone else said it's working fine on their end. Okay, well, it might just be a connection issue, Marty. I'm going to keep going, and, you know, the recording hopefully is coming through okay on the recording end, and then I'll make sure I send out the recording to, of this presentation to everybody once it's done. Um, the next step, really, in this process is, you know, looking at the actual signs that you would be putting in on your roads. And Jim Roth, who's our, our sign engineer, will be attending all three of the meetings that we have scheduled coming up. Um, and I'm just going to touch briefly on some of the things that Jim talks about, but he goes into a lot more um, explanation and he can answer specific questions that you have about you know certain areas on your roads. Um, what we're really looking at, though, on the signs is we're looking at the horizontal curves or turns and intersections and those are the two things that he's pretty much set up almost packages for you that you can order um, for those areas and we do have specific signs that are included on the sign grant this is not the only signs there's more um, the application has a, a number of signs on it but this is just a, a beginning list of some of the signs that are available on the application if you do find though that there is a sign you need that you know isn't on the application it can be added on a case-by-case -case basis and that's where it's good to look at that application packet ahead of time and get your questions ready for Jim before you come to the pre-grant meeting um, because he can you know make a decision right there for you whether or not it'll be added and I can tell you each year we do add some more signs on there's a few more signs there. Um, it's pretty much the basic signs for intersections, curves, um, the post reflectors. I can't say enough about those. Those are so very important. You know, I would definitely encourage you to make sure that you order post reflectors for your signs. Um, and they're very inexpensive, too. All of the signs do have to be installed per what they call the Ohio Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. Um, we refer to it as the OMUTCD. And if you don't already have a copy of the OMUTCD out in your township, um, we'll have forms at the pre-grant meetings for you to order one. It's available online, but I know not everybody likes to access things online. A lot of folks like to have a paper copy of it. Um, but it is basically the Bible of how to install your signs um, and it gives you all the information you need and it's an important tool to have you know as you're putting your sign order together um, there's other reference documents too that Jim has referenced on here like the traffic engineering manual it's available online um, standard construction drawings and he's got some of those actually right in the presentation that he'll show you that explains how the signs should be installed he goes into a lot of detail about minimum mounting heights to explain, you know, what's a rural area, what's considered an urban area, why do you put signs at a certain height, and, you know, he will go through the different sign types and explain that to you as well. Um, and there's a, a little bit of the information about why. There's different sign supports. And Jim will go over that information as well. Um, differences between the U channel, there's a couple of different um, types, and then discussing the, the square inch square posts and how many you should put in and how deep they should go. Um, here's 
one of the construction drawings that he has right in this presentation because when you get into the application there'll be a type p and a type f u channel well he, he explains to you what's the difference between the p and the f so that way you know um, before you order and you can match it up with what you've already are using out there on your roadways you know he also talks about you know smaller um, sized supports that are available and how that works and Jim is just a, a font of information about anything and everything to do with signs and sign installation so while we've got him there for you make sure you get all your questions answered um, he also talks to you about horizontal curves and you know what types of signs you can add in he discusses you know level one versus level two because you know your level two would be the treatment for you have even higher crashes than you do where you'd put in a, a level one um, but he does recommend a, a field review of each curve and you're probably out there driving your roads every day anyway just about to make sure you know nothing's happened from day to day that needs to be fixed so you know it wouldn't be anything to take one of those daily drives and look at putting your order together and while you're out there um, so he does go over all of that information and gives you examples of, you know, what the different curve levels are, the level one, the level two, um, and the signs that are included with that. He talks about the different sign sizes, and he does make reference to the OMUTCD um, and discusses with you what sign sizes are really needed for the number of lanes you have or the speed limit on the roadways and he helps you make certain that you know you're putting the right sign up legally as a minimum for the roadway now he also tells you though you can go larger you know you just can't go below the minimum of what the manual says for the type of roadway that you have okay good Marty's back in glad to hear that um, one thing that they, he discusses as well is the appropriate use of signs, like I mentioned earlier, and this is a big issue I know I see personally when I'm out driving um, a lot of roads is the, you know, is the 35 mile per hour curve, is that what's needed or is it really a, a turn sign where the road was ball banked for a 30 mile per hour or less um, advisory speed. And he goes over some specialty signs that are available um, as far as reverse curve, reverse turn. And he talks about the winding road, when it's appropriate to use that, a hairpin curve, a 270 degree loop. And he even goes over this reverse curve turn because we do see a lot of application for that sign um, out on township roads. And it was a sign that was actually specially developed here in Ohio to deal with a, a roadway situation or condition that we had, um, you know, and to use that instead of the actual turns because you know that really is more representative of what's occurring with the the roadway he talks about your different combination signs and what sizes those need to be um, he discusses you know how if you need um, something that isn't on the grant as far as the way the road is intersecting or coming into the curve um, that we can order that for you and he talks about the the one direction large arrow and you know how that can be used and oversized to make sure people are really aware as they're coming up on a curve um, what it is that the is occurring there so they're able to maintain their lane of traffic and not end up driving off the roadway um, and then the use of the chevrons along with that large arrow so he does talk about the left hand advance warning sign which is something that as a part of this grant we encourage especially in your higher crash areas um, you know it seems like if you double it up it, it makes people understand that there's an emphasis on the information that's being communicated and you know they have a tendency to slow down more and pay attention to it i think one thing we found with the the ball banking and those advanced warning um, advisory speeds is that through the years if those aren't updated to meet the features or the you know improved design of the newer vehicles people to start, tend to start ignoring those advanced warning 
uh, speed advisories because they know from having driven the roads that they can take it faster than what that sign's saying. So it's important, you know, especially if you haven't ball banked your roads, your curves, um, and your turns in quite a while to go out and refresh that and update it because cars do handle differently now than they handled 30 or 40 years ago. He talks quite a bit about oversized signs um, and, you know, that I know one person that um, had had oversized signs ordered and got them in and the person actually at first they were kind of taken aback they were like oh my gosh these are as big as the signs that go out in the freeway and they you know said at first they didn't really want to put them up but they went ahead and did it and it was amazing how once those oversized signs were up on the roadway they saw the crashes drop off dramatically and people had even stopped this person at church to thank them for the larger signs because they said that they were much more visible for when the you know, they had to go out um, and you know drive at night and they really appreciated the fact that they could see them better so don't be afraid to upgrade upsize your signs um, he talks quite a bit about the intersection signing and he goes over roadway ownership and who is responsible for putting which signs in and how to set that up when you have different intersections configurations um, and then again he talks about the reflectorization the those strips that run down the front those are only a few dollars amazingly and they can definitely help to improve um, the visibility of your signs so Jim will go over all of that in much more detail at the pre-grant meetings that was just kind of a, a thumbnail sketch of the information that he provides um, we have a what we call a tech transfer toolbox on how to do a ball banking study and this is just a, a clip um, and I'm not actually going to play the video, um, but we have a, a video out on our YouTube channel that explains from beginning to end how do you set the ball bank up in your vehicle. And it's just a, a little unit, almost looks like a radar detector, which of course I've only ever seen in movies, um, you know, that would sit up on your dash. And, you know, you use it to drive through the curves and measure the um, velocity basically of the vehicle and the the force of the vehicle to figure out where is it that the vehicle um, will perform the best speed wise and not have a tendency to you know depart the lanes or, or tip over so um, the ball banking is not a hard thing to learn to do and our video steps you right through it all the way through to actually um, filling out then a, an order form that you can transfer over to your bigger order form um, for you know this we have individualized order forms for each curve that you can say okay my advisory speeds 35 so these are the signs I need to order and then you can put all those add them up together and transfer them over to your bigger order form to send in as your application and it, like I said, it takes you through setting it up in your vehicle, proper measurement of the curve at various speeds as you drive through it, and then how to record those curve speed measurements, um, you know, and then how to use the, the speed measurement chart to determine what the advisory speed should be, and then filling out the, the sign needs sheet for the curve. Um, so it, it's a really easy process to do. Um, we have seven different ball banks indicators that we can loan out, and we're happy to loan those to any township that needs to get this done for their roadways. Um, as I mentioned before, um, you know, the initial determination and updating it, vehicles have changed during the years, so you want to make sure that you are updating your advisory speeds if you haven't updated those in a number of years. And we've got a link in the presentation here to our tech transfer box. So moving into the next part about what to actually expect during the grant process. And again, if you've got any questions, feel free to put them in the, the chat pod. Um, the application for this year is due June 7th. And it may seem like that's really far away with all this snow we see out there on the ground right now, but it'll be here before you know it. So if you're one of the townships who's been invited to apply, you know, 
I would definitely get on it and start figuring out, you know, from the crash maps as soon as you have them in hand, you know, where it is that you want to focus first on um, looking at upgrading your signage and then start working on building your order. So applications due June 7th. One thing we need from the township is a good email address. If your email address changes in the middle of this process, please let us know. Um, we have had some townships who have changed their email in the middle of the process, didn't tell us. We got to the point of sending out the purchase orders, copied the township on it, and every single email bounced back. So now we've got, you know, no way to communicate electronically information that we need to send out to you. Um, but Electronic communication is important because that's how we've streamlined this process for the township. The application is submitted online. Um, there's also, you know, an agreement that's signed by the township that is done online, and we ship out all the purchase orders, you know, through email. So the way it normally works is that the beginning of July. Once the township has applied, they'll get two possible notifications, either that they've been funded for this coming year or that they have not been funded at this time. Um, up till now, knock on wood, we've been able to go with number one for everybody because we haven't ran out of money. Um, but, you know, I'm hoping that enough townships apply that they run me out of money, truly. So once that happens then we go through and confirm your order with you just to make sure that that application you sent us um, is really what you feel you still need because we do have some townships that will change their mind in between um, so what we do is we take all the information you gave us and we put it into an excel spreadsheet um, with all the order details and this is the same thing we're going to give to the vendor when we place your order you know we send the excel spreadsheet along with the purchase order to the vendor so we give it back to you just the way it's going to go to the vendor and ask you to reconfirm everything and you know once you've reconfirmed it then we'll move through the agreement process and the agreement actually comes to you electronically via that email address so you want to make sure that we have you know any updated email addresses through this process um, in the agreement it does state that you're only going to put your signs on right away that the township already owns you cannot buy any new light right away um, or land during this process so signs only go on right away that the township has already earned owns so that's important and you are agreeing to that in the agreement um, it should be signed by a representative of the township who has the authority to legally bind the township so you know just make sure that that's the email address that we're given um, so we can make certain to send that agreement over for signature and what happens with you signing the agreement electronically is that you sign it and then there's two other signatures that happen here within ODOT but the old process when we first started this and we'd mail the agreements out for signature and then have to route them through the department it used to take almost a month to get the agreement assigned agreement completely signed by everybody now we've got it down to on average about 24 hours from the time you sign until it's completed and completely signed here at ODOT so we're able to cut the processing time down tremendously and get to the good part of getting you your sign orders um, once that agreement is signed it does unfortunately then sometimes take a month or two before we have the purchase orders issued because there's a lot of other steps we go through here internally um, there's environmental clearance there's right-of-way clearance there's federal authorization but once we get through those steps and have the federal authorization in hand then we move forward with issuing the purchase orders based on what you asked for on your application and then with purchase orders we email those right to the vendors but we copy your township on the email and we tell the vendors that they are to contact you especially the ones that are going to be delivering the posts and the signs to confirm the, the delivery location. Um, if you want an estimate on how long it's going to take to receive your orders once we send those purchase orders out, you have to actually contact the vendor. Um, we can't give you an estimate on how long it's going to take, but they can. And what happens traditionally once we send the purchase orders out is sometimes we see the hardware show up at townships within 48 hours 
you know, the hardware vendors are pretty quick on turning things around. The posts and the signs take a little bit longer. Um, you're probably looking at a month to two months there. Um, and it, it's a toss up whether you get the posts or the signs first. Um, it just depends, I think, on what stock they have on hand and what they've got to order in. But if you want an idea on when it's going to be delivered, then you just contact the vendors directly. For our part, what we need from you is that we need you to certify invoices as soon as you get them um, or let us know there's a problem. So when that hardware invoice comes in a couple of days after the purchase orders first go out, you need to check the hardware order that comes in, make sure everything's there, and then certify it back to us that yes, it's good to pay. Don't hold it for two months until the sign order comes in because ODOT only has um, technically 30 days to pay an invoice that doesn't have any errors on it before we start getting hit with interest and penalties. So we need you and your cooperation to certify that back to us so we can get it paid. Now, if there's a problem, then we'll work through that with you and make sure that the vendor gets things corrected and gets you what you really need um, as opposed to what they might have shipped you. But please, please do not hold invoices. Make sure you certify them to us as, as soon as you can. And the other thing is that, um, you know, with those invoices, make sure you check everything in. I can't emphasize that enough. Again, the signs all have to be installed per the Ohio Manual Uniform Traffic Control Devices. If your township does not have a copy of this book, you are entitled to one free copy, and we'll have the order forms for you at the pre-grant meetings um, that you can pick them up and order one. When your township is all finished installing signs, we, you just give us a call and we'll send out electronically the installation certification form. Um, you fill that out, certifying to us that you've installed all the signs that you received under the grant, and then we close the project out. So we might follow up with you though once your project is closed out and come out and do a what we call a quality assurance review. Um, we do these randomly and if your township is selected for a quality assurance review we come out and we look to make certain that you've installed all the signs the way um, they were supposed to be installed um, per the Ohio Manual of Uniform Traffic Control Devices. So it's important to make sure you're following that. I'm going to go over some quick do's and don'ts, and then we'll look at opening the phone lines up for some questions. Um, quick don'ts. Do not order signs you're not planning on installing. We're only providing signs that you're actually going to install. This is not an opportunity to build up your inventory. So if you do order extra signs and then we come out for a quality assurance review and we don't find that you've installed all 50 stop signs that you ordered, that you've only got 34 stop signs in the field and, and you had 16 you were saving in the garage as replacements, there's going to be a problem and your township will be required to pay back for those 16 extra that you ordered that didn't actually get installed. So make sure you only order signs that you're planning on installing. This is not an opportunity to build up your inventory again. Also, don't order signs with the intention of trading them to another municipality for a smaller size. Um, I wouldn't put this on here if someone hadn't actually said they were going to do that. Um, but what you order is what we expect to see that you have in the field. So do not order signs that you're not going to install for your township or have, you know, have your partner village install. Um, also, don't change your email in the middle of the grant process without notifying this, us. And I know I mentioned that already. Don't sit on paperwork. You need to process your agreement as soon as you can after you receive it. Don't hold invoices. Get those back to us certified as soon as you can. Also, do not blindly certify invoices for payment. Make sure you're checking your orders and that the invoice is correct. I actually had a township, unfortunately, that blindly certified the sign invoice. They got their signs in, I think it was the uh, be end of January, beginning of February. They stuck them all in the, the township garage, still on the pallet wrapped up, sent the paperwork back to us certifying, saying, yes, everything's here, we're good. When they finally got to unpacking those to start installing them in June, 
they figured out that they were missing all their stop signs. Not a single stop sign had been shipped by the vendor. Now, we paid it end of January, and now, five months later, the township's calling to say, hey, all the stop signs are missing. I found a way to work that out through pulling, you know, tickets for how much um, weight was shipped to the township and then working with our sign shop down, you know, at our sign shop um, garage where they make all the ODOT signs and cross-checking the weight of every single sign that was in that giant order to show that the weight that should have shipped didn't, but we won't and will not be doing that again. You know, we're telling everybody up front, you know, if you just blindly certify that, yes, all the signs are here, and then you decide to check the order five months or however longer later after you've certified it, and you find out signs are missing, um, where you told us, yes, they were already there, you know, your township's going to be responsible for purchasing those signs and getting them installed as a part of the grant. So even if it's the end of January, you got to take the time and unwrap those pallets and go through and count those signs. And, you know, I'm sorry, but that's just the way it is um, as part of this grant process. You know, we've got to have the invoices sent back in as soon as possible, and you have got to check the orders in. It's your responsibility to make sure that everything is there before you certify the invoice to us. We have some frequently asked questions. Can I get a smaller stop sign than what's listed on the grant application? No. Um, the whole purpose of this grant is to put out signs that are the proper sign size for the roadway and really to possibly upgrade the sign size. So. Um, you know, we have minimum sign sizes on the grant application and, and we can't go any smaller than what's listed there. We've had some townships that when they get invited say, you know, I just replaced all of my signs within the last year. Can I just give you that bill and have you pay for them? Unfortunately, no. Um, we can't reimburse you for signs your township already purchased. This whole process is set up um, where we're purchasing off of certain contracts and paying for it with ODOT funds directly. Um, so, you know, we just can't go back in time and pay for things that your township already purchased. They had a lot of questions about ordering signs from local vendors if their prices are lower than what's listed on the grant application. Um, the answer to this question is no, you cannot buy from your local vendors even if the prices are lower than what's on the application because as ODOT we're locked into certain contracts that are negotiated you know, on an annual basis and that we have to order from those contracts and since we're paying for it we have to make sure that we're buying off the, the ODOT contracts. So no, we can't um, have your township purchase and then ask us for reimbursement. We did have a, a question come in on the, the chat pod um, are the, this individual says, am I correct to assume that the best case scenario is that signs won't be delivered until late fall? Yes, that is correct. You're probably not looking at your signs coming in until late fall. And we understand that, you know, there's timing issues with that because of the weather and the need to plow snow. But that's why you've got a whole year after federal authorization. Traditionally, federal authorization for most of the projects is going to happen somewhere in the late August to late September timeframe. Um, that's about when it happens in the process. So you're really looking at having um, until possibly the end of September or the following year to get all your signs installed. And if you need more time, um, then you know we can definitely you know, work with you on a one-year extension. There's a, an, another question about flashing signage. And um, we actually have that on this next screen. Um, there's a question on here, a frequently asked question about LED stop signs being part of the grant. Um, no, those are not part of the grant. Those are actually what's considered in the intersection um, signage world um, to be a level three improvement, and we're not covering level three improvements under this grant. Um, the intent of this grant is to focus on low cost improvements. Um, and a traditional stop sign will cost you somewhere around $40, whereas one of those flashing LED stop signs can cost you about $2,500. So they're not included as a part of this grant process. However, 
If you feel that that's the type of improvement you need, you could probably go through the road safety audit process and ask for that as a, a countermeasure to improve roadway safety. And then they could hopefully look at funding that um, under the road safety audit process. So um, Doug, there is some hope. It just, the hope isn't gonna come under the township sign grant program. It's gonna come under going through the road safety audit process for those LED stop signs. On the application, we only put a picture of a 35 mile per hour advisory speed sign. You can get other speeds than just the 35 mile per hour advisory speed. We just didn't want to put a picture of every single possible advisory speed um, amount on the application because it would have made it even longer. So there's going to be a little box under where it asks for how many advisory speed um, signs do you need? And then the little box below say, please tell us the quantities of each speed advisory speed limit that you'd like. So, you know, if you need 215s, if you need 420s, if you need, you know, 1625s, you can list that all the detail out um, right below the total number of advisory speed signs that you're ordering. Same with the speed limit sign. We only put a picture of a 55 mile per hour speed limit sign on the application, but you can definitely get the um, you know, details listed out underneath in that same type of box. So we order the right number of each type of speed limit sign for you. We talked about the LED stop signs already. Um, and then the other big thing we keep getting asked is our deer crossing signs included as part of the grant. They're not because unfortunately the deer don't pay any attention to them when we put them up. But in all seriousness, um, you know, they those signs just have not been proven to be that effective in preventing deer crashes. So there was a tr decision made not to include them as a part of the grant because they felt like they wanted to put more funds into, you know, chevrons and advanced warning um, curve and turn signs, advisory speeds, you know, stop ahead signs, those type of signs. So all the questions that were in the chat pod, I'll just re-review that real quickly. Um, and I hope there's another one that's come in. If one road of an intersection in the township is owned and maintained by the county, can the township still apply for the signage for that, for the intersection? The road that's owned and maintained by the county, the so you're talking about a township road intersecting with the county road. The actual stop sign where the township road intersects with the county road should be covered by the county. Now the signs leading up to the county road, um, those signs on the township road would still be put in place by the township, like your stop ahead signs or maybe the um, advanced intersection warning signs. Anything other than just the stop sign that's right there in the right of way for the county road that the inter township road is intersecting. And that's something that Jim will cover in the pre-grant uh, meetings pretty extensively as he talks about all the different roadway ownership. Um, we had another one, grant labeled a township sign grant program. What about county owned roads in the township? Actually, the counties have a separate grant program that's available to them through the County Engineers Association um, that ODOT funds. And the counties do have funds available to upgrade signs. So I would encourage you if you feel like there's a, an area that um, where your county road is intersecting with that excuse me, your township road is intersecting with the county road, that you talk to your county engineer about, you know, them at the same time upgrading that stop sign, which I'm guessing that's probably what it'll be, um, on their right of way intersecting with your road or any signs leading up to your township road. Um, and they should be able to get those covered under that sign grant program that the counties have available to them. Would buggy warning signs be covered? Buggy warning signs are covered. The, those signs are included as part of the grant um, and we definitely encourage you to take a look at putting those up. We do understand that there's a, an ever-growing Amish population in Ohio and you know that they, they are expanding into areas of the state where they previously had not had communities and we um, are 
um, definitely want to help improve the safety for the Amish community because it, when you look at it, they're considered to be sensitive road users since they are traveling in a, a mode that the speeds for those buggies are far below the speed that a vehicle would be traveling at. And if a crash does occur, then normally it, it's the buggy and the buggy occupants who suffer much more severely as far as injuries or fatalities than would someone who's um, in a vehicle. Um, so yes, the buggy signs are definitely covered. So the grant monies used specifically for township roads only. Yes, Karen, that's what the intent of the, the grant is, is to use it for the township roads only. Um, but don't worry, the county does have their own grant available to them uh, that they can tap into to deal with signage on the county system. So with that, we actually butted up right against 11 o'clock. So I'm not going to get a chance to unmute the phone line, but I am going to type my email address into the chat pod and give it to you. Um, again, it's Victoria Beal with the Ohio LTAP Center, and the email address is victoria.beal, B-E-A-L-E, -E, at dot.ohio.gov. Uh, feel free to send me any questions you have that um, we possibly didn't get to here on the webinar. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. I'm so glad that we had so many people on the webinar. And I'm hopeful that you guys will run us out of money this year when the applications come in, um, because I want every township that's eligible to apply for this grant. Thank you so much. And we hope to see you on another webinar in the future.